Well, she owes sisters and brothers, brothers and sisters, to come now, this time in this way, to think about God's will and God's way for us today. And so, our readings today are going to be in, uh, starting with the Hebrew Bible there, uh, Psalm 114. So, if anybody wants to open up their Bibles to follow along, they can. It's going to be Psalm 114. Uh, And of course, I'm going to change the reading a little bit to eliminate the uh, patriarchal and doctrine of discovery kind of thing on influence on the uh, scripture interpretation of translation. Psalm 114, when Israel went out from Egypt, the house of Jacob, from a people of strange language, Judah became God's sanctuary. Israel, God's dominion. The sea looked and fled. Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams. The hills like lambs. Why is it, O sea, that you flee? O Jordan, you turn back. O mountains, that you skip like rams. O hills, like lambs. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of God, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turns the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a spring of water. And our reading today from the uh, New Testament would be Romans uh, verses 1 through 14, I believe. No, 1 through 12. 1 through 12. So Romans 1, or Romans 14, 1 through 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat most, or excuse me, those who eat must not despise those who abstain. And those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own God that they stand or fall. And they will be upheld, for God is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of God. Also those who eat, eat in honor of God, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of God and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to God. And if we die, we die to God. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are God's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be God of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or why? For you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says God, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise 
to go. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Hear the word of the book of Romans. Sometimes people need help in understanding the sacredness of God and of how to honor the sacredness of God and the sacredness of ceremony and the sacredness of all life. I remember one such occasion in which that occurred. Many years ago, in, uh, when I was living in Taos, New Mexico, and we had a center out there, we were helping the people in our Indian religious way according to Native, Native American Christian teachings that I was taught to walk. We were uh, performing, and still do actually perform, the annual Jalaska ceremony, which is the time of crying for a vision. Now, in the way that grandfather taught me, as he was taught by his grandfather, it takes about a year to prepare for this ceremony. And I'm kind of cautious because in this day and age, you know, things have changed quite a bit since the time of everybody growing up in community and being around ceremony on a regular basis and there are many who are uh, wanting to be connected who are not walked, who are not raised in the way. And so, uh, you know, sometimes folks call them wannabes and I heard in a movie, I can't remember the name of it now, it was one of those Hallmark movies about, about American Indians, four American Indians. But uh, one of the elders in there, grandfather, and my grandson was complaining about the wannabes, and the grandfather said, yeah, they want to be connected. And all folks feel the call of spirit within them to be connected with God, to have that relationship, that personal relationship with God. And so we welcome those who come in, any, in a good way to participate in our ceremony, regardless of who they are, because as you read here, in Romans chapter 14, and who are we to judge who God sends to our door? And who are we to exclude those who God calls? And so, some of these folks, they, uh, they feel a call, but they don't understand the way of things. They don't have that, that connection to the to the star people, to the earth, to the animals that, that many of us already have because of how we were raised and how we live. And so uh, sometimes I need a little help. Well, in this particular situation, I had a, a group of people in recovery, those who were struggling to get back on their feet after living lives of chaos, who were wanting to out on the hill to give of themselves that others may live, but also to uh, grow in their relationship and their trust in Creator. So this was a big deal for them, to be able to make this commitment and follow through on it. And now, as many of us know, when people, they start heavily using alcohol and drugs and they get addicted to them, their emotional maturity gets, gets stopped. And a lot of them start this process when they're teenagers. And then they go through a period of time and then they get sober. But emotionally, they're still teenagers. And so uh, it gets kind of interesting being around them. And so uh, we have to remember that uh, they never grew up. They never learned to have that empathy, that understanding, that connection with others. And so they, it's a learning curve for them to, to grow in that emotional and spiritual way in a good way. So uh, before I put anybody out on the hill, they have to come the year before and help out with the camp, but they, these folks did. But a year is a long time, especially when you're not maybe around the ceremony on an ongoing basis, to remember everything 
had happened in that year before and to recall how that felt, especially if you're caught up in the day-to-day -day, good guy, bad guy, and who's dating who and all that stuff, you know, the emotional chaos that we see on national television every day. So uh, it came time for these folks to gather, to go out on the hill. And they come from all over the lands. And they met on Friday night. And Saturday morning, we like to get everybody in a good way. So we have a lodge ceremony there to prepare people to get ready to go out to the land. And they were doing the praying and getting in a good way. And, uh, but they were laughing, joking around, and, and not really understanding the fullness and the seriousness of what was going on there. And they were uh, actually getting a little obscene because if there's one thing that I have found about people in recovery when they get around in here religious ceremony, at least this bunch, they like to get a little raunchy. And that was annoying. And so, uh, you know, you try, to, you try to be patient and understanding and help them to come to that place of clarification. But in this particular situation, there was three people in particular at this, at this gathering who were the troublemakers. They were just bound and determined to stir people up every chance they got. They were getting raunchy and loud and obnoxious and rude. I think they were scared and they were trying to make up for it by being just obscene on the ceremonial grounds. And, uh, you know, you try to have understanding, but uh, you talk to them about it. And so I kept reinforcing, you know, lighting the fire, through the process and the sacredness of that fire. Get things going, do the smudging of the people, you go into lodge, you want to pray in a good way. But even in the lodge, they were being just thinking about themselves a lot, not thinking about others. Now what's the point of going out on the hill if you're just going to think about yourself all the time? I'm here to tell you, you know, one round after another, just Praying for themselves, what they want, how they want it, this and that. They weren't interested in giving a service. And it was kind of interesting. I could feel the spirit of us getting agitated. The more these people were going on, the hotter that lodge would get, the stronger the power was coming on. Boy, I'll tell you what, it was a rough time. And I could feel the thunder people, boy, oh man. As a keeper of the thunder medicine, I knew I could feel the thunder power building up. And sure enough, about halfway through that lodge, it started thundering right over top of it. So clouds rolled in, big storm kicked up. The wind started to blow. And you up there in the high desert, when that wind hits that lodge, you can feel that whole lodge shaking. And they were ignoring it. They were ignoring the warnings, ignoring the signs. They weren't in touch, they weren't in tune, so they weren't listening, they weren't hearing, too busy chatting with themselves. And uh, so, Creator, uh, Creator's patience, I think, ran out on them there. And sure enough, the thunder started getting stronger and stronger, and, and I just couldn't believe that they were just not paying the least bit of attention, they just kept going on and on and on. And finally, uh, we ended the ceremony, we came out, it was a little bit right after noon, we stepped out of that lodge. And they come out, they had gone 10 feet. The lightning bolt shut down right over the fire pit. Just about above their heads, maybe a little higher above the buildings. Arched straight out towards the sacred ground. And this loud kaboom made them all jump and scream. And I guarantee you, at that point, they were paying attention. Every eye was on me. Every mouth was closed. And I looked at them calmly, quietly, and I said, now we can go. The rest of that trip out there was just as smooth as a calm pond in the high mountain. Everybody loaded up. Everything was done in an organized, peaceful way. It all rolled out to the camp. Everything was set up. The kitchen was set up. The camp started. Everything was doing fine. And 
we got going and the evening meal came along and it was I thought everything was going to be all right but you know when you're around a bunch of teenagers and big bodies what are you going to get they forget they forgot what happened that morning they forgot how the creator gave them the warning the thunder people came said you all better watch out what you're doing because we take this real seriously well, you know, some people, they just enjoy learning the hard way. So, there it was, 4 a.m. We got up, coyotes singing around us, out there in that high desert. It was beautiful. I remember it. Pitch black, went over, lit the sacred fire. Yep, everybody... Spare waking everybody up, drum beating, all coming around the fire, getting ready to go. And uh, they were mumbling and chattering amongst themselves again, acting like it's no big deal. Want to be a piece of cake. Somebody even bragging about how easy this was going to be. You know, that childishness. And uh, so I was like, I turned to my helpers and I just shook my head. Oh boy, here it comes. As soon as the fire was ready, the stones were ready, before the sun was up, we went into the lodge, just as the sun's coming up. We did our songs, we did our proper prayers, everything was in a good way. Came out of the lodge, I told them they all had just a few minutes to get their stuff together. They weren't going to go out. Yep, we went out to the grounds, I got out there, got everybody unloaded, get ready to put the people out. <coughs> we started setting the people out, there was a bunch of them, we set them out. About halfway through, I looked at my helpers and I said, okay, we're, we're starting to run out of time now. So we continued on steadily and properly, walking the people out and setting them in their places where they would be, and I was giving them the warnings about making sure that they stayed within their prayer ties and all the proper things to do. And we got to the last one, and we finished putting them out, and I turned to my helpers and I said, we got five minutes to get out of here. And we hustled back to our vehicles, and we took off, and they didn't hesitate. They knew what I was talking about. Now, we're talking the end of May, beginning of June, and I just thousand months ago. We're on Sandy Road. So we hustled it. We got back to the camp. About halfway back, here it came. Boom! First the heavy flood. <sighs> Crashing down on the people out on the hill. And I was like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> and mind you, this is a, this is nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and then came the snow. The snow hit hard. It hit fast. It hit deep. By 10.30, 11 o'clock, there was four to six inches of snow on the ground. Then the sun came out. By four o'clock, it was 80 degrees. <laughs> and everything was melting. <laughs> and it flooded and it soaked. So, you can believe me when I say it was one heck of a time. When I went out to check these people while they were out on the hill, I knew they all weren't going to make it. And sure enough, by sunset, I had to bring two of them back in. They had already given up. I couldn't handle what it took to honor God's call, to honor the sacredness of God, the sacredness of ceremony, the sacredness of all life. They learned the hard way. The importance of hearing God's word, walking in God's trail in a good way. And they learned the lesson a little bit. And so one of them came back the following year. And this time completed the commitment. The other one never did. Wasn't able to. The rest of them managed to do all right. And they changed them. Changed them in a good way. They learned the importance 
of being a good servant and not putting yourself first. And so we think about this as these people learn how to ride the light, walk in the way of the thunder, walk in the way of our Creator, as we heard in our reading today. How are you walking in your relationship with Creator, in your service? Do you really understand what it means to honor the sacredness of God? Honor all life. To have reverence and respect for God's will and God's way and God's people. Something like that.